The stories of abuse told today were difficult to hear. A doctor now accused of sexually abusing as many as 800 athletes. And the statement today that if Bo Schembechler had simply listened to his young son, much of that trauma could have been prevented. We have team coverage with reaction to the allegations, but we start with news ace Emily Leonard and the message from three survivors of Dr. Robert Anderson's abuse. Details of the repeated sexual abuse over decades were revealed at today's press conference. The first to speak, legendary Michigan football coach Bo Schembechler's own son. He said the athletic director fired Anderson when he came forward 50 years ago, but Bo Schembechler demanded he be reinstated. I hope my father would protect me, but he didn't. Matt Schembechler says when he told his mom in 1969 about the abuse he received at the hands of Dr. Robert Anderson, she insisted he tell his dad. He said today that did not go well. Bo's temper was legendary and he lost it. He screamed, I don't want to hear this. I'm not hearing this. I tried to tell him repeatedly, but my effort earned me a punch in the chest. If Bo listened to his son, these two gentlemen would not be sitting up here today. If Bo listened to either one of them, hundreds of victims could have been saved. Instead, it's alleged hundreds were sexually assaulted by Anderson over the decades. And Daniel Kwiatkowski played for Michigan Anderson in the 1970s. Bo. Bo knew. Everybody knew. Kwiatkowski said when he went to Schembechler about Anderson. Bo looked at me and said, toughen up. We need to now do what is right, as Martin Luther King said. So that people that are entrusted to these universities, their students and people that are invited on their campus are protected and are more important than the power, the privilege, the profits of the program, more important than the team more important even than the brand. Givani Johnson says the coaching staff would threaten the players with visits to Dr. Anderson if they felt they weren't playing hard enough. Only now do I realize how crazy it was to threaten rape as a way of motivating players to work harder. The players today looking for healing, accountability, and to make sure nothing like this ever happens again. I understand the reverence people have for my father, including Jim Harbaugh. But I know the truth. Anderson abused me and countless others over three decades. For News 8, I'm Emily Leonard. At the University of Michigan is not there are calls for Shem Beckler's name to be removed from campus. News 8's Kyle Mitchell continuing our team coverage from Ann Arbor. The football building here on campus bears the Shem Beckler name with a statue in front. Students we spoke with say they found the allegations very disturbing. I was pretty alarmed by it. Ben U has a student from Grand Haven says the university needs to take the allegations seriously and investigate further. Kind of reading through the stuff that actually happened and the documented kind of interactions that the doctor had with the players and how Schembechler handled it was very concerning. He says what happens to the Schembechler name on the football program building and his statute needs to be carefully discussed. His name is one of the most popular things that you think of with success here with football. So it's important that we kind of take a step back and as a university, we try to figure out how to kind of respond solve this issue. The university did not answer News 8's questions on whether it's considering renaming the building or removing the statue. A spokesperson sent us a statement saying in part, quote, our sympathy for all of Anderson's victims is deep and unwavering, and we thank them for their bravery in coming forward. We condemn and apologize for the tragic misconduct of the late Dr. Robert Anderson, who left the university 17 years ago and died 13 years later. We are committed to resolving their claims and to continuing the court-guided confidential mediation process. Some students say removing the name or statute should depend on the findings of an investigation. I think it depends how severe like the cover-up was and like whether he was a key player in it or if he was just, you know, in the background and may or may not have known about it. But if they clearly find that he was responsible for covering it up, I don't think he can be representing the university at that point. Others students say it's not hard to believe the allegations with more people coming forward. It's hard for me to think he's making it up, so I really think they should look into it. And if it's true, they should probably try to distance themselves from the Schembechler name. In Ann Arbor, Kyle Mitchell, News 8. Today we did want to talk with those here in West Michigan who knew Bo Schembechler. New at 6 o'clock, Jacqueline Francis talked to one of his former assistant coaches who is coming to Schembechler's defense. 
Elliot Uzelek has a lengthy resume that includes two stints coaching alongside Bo Beckler at the University of Michigan in the 70s and 80s. In his retirement, Uzelek has coached high school teams in St. Joseph, Benton Harbor, and now Berrien Springs. I caught up with him today briefly on the phone to get his take on the allegations against a man he spent years coaching alongside. These rumors about Coach Beckler avoiding a discussion about Dr. Anderson. I don't believe him. Uh, I, not the bow that if I worked for would never have done that. He absolutely adored his players and uh, and his son, and uh, I, I don't see that happening. Did you hear the remarks made by his son today and the former no, players? No, I have not. I have not. I just saw uh, something in last night's paper. But you got to understand that uh, his son, Matt, uh, they always had an issue. Uh, Matt and Bo always had an issue, and uh, I, I'm not sure what the situation would be there, you know. But I just, I know, I don't believe any of these accusations about Coach Schembechler. I do not. And that's all I could say. Today, I also talked to former University of Michigan athletes here in West Michigan, at least one of which is involved in the ongoing lawsuit against the university. They told me that they are still processing these new developments and are not ready to do interviews. We will continue to share their stories and bring them to you as they're ready. Back to you. Jacqueline, thank you. If you missed Matt Schembechler's news conference earlier, you can watch it right now at woodtv.com.